Hey, welcome to the review of the Galaxy Note Edge, and this is Phil from thecage.com. So let's get straight into it. So this is basically the Galaxy Note 4 plus the Edge display that adds up 160 pixels onto the right-hand side of the handset display. And this is this was made possible by the curved display the Samsung had. And let's get straight to the top of the phone. It's got a receiver, Samsung logo, a front-facing camera that's brighter and wider than ever on the Samsung device. And this this actually tr takes pretty good selfie photos. And on behind that is a 5.6 inches of a curved display, 2560 by 1440 plus 160 pixels of curved display. And the multitasking key, the home key with the fingerprint sensor and the back key resides there. To the right is obviously the edge display that you can turn on like that or even in the situations when the phone is turned off, you can just swipe from left to right and back and forth to turn it on if it works nicely and you can just scroll to see what's happening in your phone. To the top is a power key that has moved from the right side, that's a traditional position to the top because of the edge display and the earphones jack with the infrared port with the microphone on top. Uh, to the left is a volume rocker and to the micro USB port and two microphones here and there and the S Pen there. And on the back is a camera with the LED flash, uh, the heart rate monitor sensor that I use more often to take my selfie. So you can just basically tap and release your finger and it's gonna take your selfie, just like a shutter key. And below that is a carrier logo with the Samsung logo, speaker grill, and the pen again. And the battery cover is, especially in the black one, is has this fake leather kind of finish that we have seen from the Galaxy Note 3. And this is actually even better on the Galaxy Note Edge. And the battery cover is detachable. There you can gain the access to the micro SD card slot, expandable to 128 gigabytes, or the micro SIM card slot there. And the battery comes with the third, uh, 3000 milliamps, and that's also replaceable, so you can just get an extra pair. And closing the battery cover back, I was actually quite surprised at what Samsung did with the Galaxy Note Edge, that it had um, the the metal finish on the edges and um, the overall design looks a lot uh, cleaner than the previous one. So it seems like Samsung has taken another uh, step to its newer design strategies. The size wise is almost identical to the Galaxy Note 3 and compared to the iPhone 6 Plus it is a bit shorter. Goes like that. And the main point over here is the edge display. So what you can basically do with the edge display, and again, Samsung's fingerprint sensor is not working very well. So what you can do with the edge display is that, firstly, you can just put the icons over here that's, that are your shortcuts. So that's why they took the, the dock bar out of the Samsung launcher, because the icons are always there anyway. And you can scroll from right to left and back and forth to switch between the panels on the note uh, on the edge displays. And the closer look goes like that. That was the task monitor, that was the ramp status, just the geeky things, the app shortcuts, news, music controllers, and so on and so forth. And you can scroll from top to bring out the shortcut menus such as a ruler over here, that's kind of not exactly useful, and the stopwatch or the timer or even the flashlight over here. So we can just turn it off over here. That's the basic usage for the uh, the edge display. And it also works as a toolbar on the other apps uh, that support the edge display, such as in camera over here, the camera shutter key goes here, and uh, when you're rotated, the shutter key moves around here. So it doesn't interfere with the screen, the, the viewfinder that you want to see your photo and because all the tools are over here. And if you want to see another app that supports the edge display flawlessly is the S Note. So it, the toolbar comes around here. So you get the perfect uh, full screen that you can just write on the anywhere without the toolbars again interfering with your screen. Screen and just to mention the S Pen, S Pen now has doubled the um, the sensitivity of the pressure, so it works a lot better than the previous one. So that's the edge display. Uh, it's kind of interesting. It's, it's of course an interesting feature to have, and you can just download another um, 
other panels over here. So those are the panels that it comes with the device and you can download more in the Galaxy apps. Uh, they have more panels over here and they're updating constantly and Samsung has opened up the SDK so we can expect more uh, panels are gonna come soon as the developers join in the, into the game and the express me over here is what shows when your phone is on the lock screen so it goes like that if you want to put a photo there you can do that too I really should disable this fingerprint thingy so you can just put a photo over here and it would actually rotate as you move your phone around. Just a little gimmicky feature over here that Samsung has put. And um, people have been wondering what, will it, uh, what happens if you're a lefty. Of course you can be a lefty and you can just rotate the phone 180 degrees and the edge display still is going to be there. And uh, what about the keys on the top? There is the soft key over here, so you can just use a phone uh, on your left hand as well. And this soft key also is movable, so you can just put it uh, into the right position that you want it to be. And another neat thing that uh, Samsung has added is this one hand mode. Uh, there's a soft key on the left side of the phone or the right side if you prefer it that way. Uh, so you can back home and multitask and you can even manage to edit those key layouts and positions. And that's for the edge display. For the launcher, they, um, it's the typical Samsung launcher, aside from the, the dock has removed from the bottom of the phone, uh, it's pretty much the Samsung launcher. Um, it um, doesn't really have much of the interesting features, it's just plain Samsung. The one thing that is noticeable is the screen is now um, obviously a lot wider than before. They used a lot of white colors compared to the black that, you, that they've been using. So let's have a Galaxy Note 3 over here and compare it to the Galaxy Note 3. The menu is in white and also the dialer and the context messages, they are all in white. And um, <clears throat> the S Pen has got a lot better too. The, of course the S Pen has doubled the pressure sensitivity and also in the gallery if you want to choose the photos that you have, uh, that you have taken. Usually you will be tapping each of the photos, but with the new S Pen, you can just click on the button and just scroll like you're doing with your mouse on your, on your PC. So that's a little neat feature. And um, the camera-wise, the camera's got a lot better, actually. The Galaxy Note 3's camera was not exactly the most impressive one, and this takes amazing photos. Let me show you some over here. If I can unlock, if I can unlock this, this isn't working very well. All right, to the gallery. Uh, so those are some of the photos that we have taken with the Galaxy Note Edge. And they were actually really impressive. Uh, in the bright conditions, they took amazing photos and so did they in the darker conditions as well. In the darker environments, this, uh, the Galaxy Note Edge took the best photo ever the Samsung phones did. This is probably better than the Galaxy camera even. They were amazing and so were the, uh, the videos as well. Uh, what about the perform performances? It's got an Exynos octa-core processor and 3 gigabytes of RAM, so that shouldn't be a problem and this, that definitely isn't. Uh, even though it's got a WQHD display resolution, we kind of worried because a higher resolution means a more uh, overload in your CPU and the more load on the CPU is a lot likelier to get lags on your phones, but this guy didn't. Uh, we are presuming that this is probably thanks to the octa-core Exynos processor and it was flawless what, whichever we run. The one thing that we were disappointed was the battery life. Uh, the battery, although it's got a slightly smaller capacity of the battery than Galaxy Note 4, it only was able to run about three or four hours of the screen on time. That we were very disappointed at. One thing we we're suspecting is the cocktail bot service which runs the this edge display over here and this does accumulate into some noticeable amount of the power uh, consume, uh, consumption. So we are kind of suspecting the edge display as the main cause of the battery drain. The sound quality was also amazing. So the sound quality from the headphones and both speaker was very good. But the one thing that uh, overperformed over the Galaxy Note Edge speaker was the iPhone 6 Plus or the iPhone 6 even. This uh, even has the bass sound that we could hear heard from. Uh, it's like a it's like a boom from the speaker. Uh, the Galaxy Note Edge didn't have such a 
impressive sound quality. And this really isn't working. All right, Samsung really has to do something with the fingerprints. So this, <clears throat> this overall is a pretty interesting phone and the amazing phone at the same time. Uh, the screen is very amazing, although we couldn't really notice the differences between the Galaxy Note 3's uh, full HD display and the and the QHD display on the Galaxy Note Edge, it still is a very good display. So this is a great phone, but uh, is Edge display worth your money? That's um, extra few extra bucks, uh, 100 bucks uh, on top of the Galaxy Note Edge, uh, Galaxy Note 4 that's already expensive? We're not entirely sure, because there are some aspects that we thought Samsung would definitely take care of that were not integrated, such as, all right, the bar, the interesting bar functions are cool, but um, there are only few apps that take advantage of the, the, the edge display, such as the camera over here has a toolbar over here, and the S Note does uh, make a good use of the edge display. But what about the other apps? Those are almost the, all the apps that take advantage of the edge display. Let's go to context. There is an index over here. We definitely thought that they would put index over here, but they didn't. And there are so many other things that they could have put to the edge display, but they didn't. Such as the options over here, they could have definitely put it over here. But what the what does the edge display do? While the while these icons block my sight of the photo, they really don't do anything. So those are the things. Edge display were not as useful as we had expected. And um, is that worth your few hundred bucks? It's it's really nice. It's, it seems really cool, and sometimes it's useful. Such as when you're when you want to take a Look at your time when the phone is off. It's pretty cool and neat, but is that really worth your money? We're not really sure about that. We would just simply go to Galaxy Note 4 because the phone itself is pretty amazing, except for the Edge display. All right, so that was Galaxy Note Edge, and we were on thecage.com. If you want to take a, more, take a look at more photos or more uh, other reviews, drop by on thecage.com. Our social media is, of course, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Google Plus. Greet you with the latest of Undercage. Thank you always for watching and we'll see you guys later.